Hey, Hrock, it's me and my girlfriend's anniversary tomorrow, and we both love your content. Can I get a clip of you saying happy anniversary? Our names are Lucas and Cass. Everyone in chat, congratulate Lucas and Cass for flexing their happy relationship on us. Oh, we get it, Lucas and Cass. You have a long-lasting happy relationship. It's a chat full of virgins. Lonely virgins. And you're sitting here flexing in your donos? Your subs? Actually, while we're talking about crazy things, I, I do want to talk about, I don't know if you guys know this, but statistically, uh, a lot of chat will actually be virgins. Now, this is not a knock. I'm not, I'm no longer doing a bit. A couple uh, crazy trends are happening and they're all happening in confluence that are particularly um, hard for younger men, okay? And I think that's probably why some of the alt radicalizing so many of them but if you look at this this is the the number of 18 to 30 year olds reporting no sex in the past year it's at all-time highs <laughs> so between 18 and 30 either no sex or or basically incel all-time high and um a lot of them are looking for partners things have changed drastically in how partners are found let me see if i can uh... so the ways romantic couples meet for many many years was through friends bar slash restaurant or college. Those were the three main ones. Around, let's say 2007, it started to be online was more popular. And now online is the most popular by far. And there are a couple key differences in meeting a relationship partner online than versus these other methods, which I think might provide a better chance at finding someone who is aligned with you. And that is that you are in comp with these methods, you are often in local competition. You know what I'm saying? You are competing against a random hodgepodge of people sort of in your local area and there's a lot of random happenstance but with the the sort of mass market herd value of things like tinder and hinge and everything you are in competition with every other person in a massive radius and that makes it more difficult and actually creates a what you might call um unequal society the top 10 percent of men on Hinge, for example, receive over 60% of the likes, while the comparable figure for women is only 45%. Basically, what that means is the bottom 80% of male Tinder users are competing for the bottom 22% of women. And this is only for straight relationships on Tinder. It's a, that's the data. That's it. That's a difficult <laughs> statistical challenge <laughs> because you don't have a lot to go off of. If you meet someone through friends and you meet someone through a bar, restaurant, or through college, you have more to go off of to build a picture of their character through online, you're often judged by basically two metrics, which is physical appearance in pictures and earnings potential. <laughs> so if you're not like an absolute, you know, mega Chad, you know, and people, when they say this often sound like they're fucking sliding into this terrible red pill group. I'm just saying for, for the math, it is difficult, right? For these, for these people that are trying to find a partner in a largely changing online based, you know, uh, relationship world where, where things are being judged in different ways. So I, I'm, I'm interested in how this all plays out. I think this is, these are a lot of crazy trends. And then men are dropping out of college at much higher rates than women and enrolling for college at much lower rates than women um, more every year. And, and now it's like 40%. So it's 60, 40 women. So all I'm saying is a lot of things are happening at once that I think are probably gonna have weird effects. You know, there's gotta be a way to talk about it or think about it or make changes on it that isn't letting extremely toxic ideologically weird red pill groups control the conversation because if everyone ignores it then those guys get all the voice so i just want to bring it up and say like if you feel like you're struggling with this kind of thing it's not weird you're not you're not isolated this is like there, there's a lot of weird pressures that are happening that are changing and, and you shouldn't go to those groups for answers because they they're just gonna feed you anger yeah we should get a chad tax a chad tax would be good if you have hair like ludwig you should pay more <laughs> And that's fair. That, uh, but I, anyway, I, I want to bring it up because I think no one ever talks about it in a way that isn't weird Jordan Peterson-y. And so I want people to know that like these stats are real. You're not crazy. It's just like you need to find a way to deal with it more appropriately. Actually, thank you. It feels awful joining Hitch and not getting matches. Yeah, you, it's just tough. It's just tough the way the stats are. It's Unless you are born genetically uh, uh, crazy or you have insane earnings potential or a way to throw it off you are you are literally odds are against you to find a good match so and again i'm not listen i'm speaking to things i would know more about right there's plenty of flaws in online dating on the female side as well plenty <laughs> probably there's, there's dangers too uh there, there's many many things that i can talk about on that side but i just i think these trends are interesting because um a lot of that stuff has always been dangerous 
and this is like a recent trend that is heading poorly. It's hard to show personality over profile. Well, it's also like there, there's stuff that shows that like interacting with somebody, the more time you spend with somebody, the less the fact those two factors matter. So, so like if you're in a club with someone and you, you make each other laugh and have a good relationship or whatever, the less that raw attractiveness and, and money matter, it goes down. But because everything is done over the internet and it's only first impressions for even getting a match, those things become, it's just an unique environment. Someone said, no matter how good a, a video is, someone's gotta click on the thumbnail first. That's so true. Basically, a lot of men are just decent videos with bad thumbnails. <laughs> and that's hard because there's a lot of videos out there, dude. And then they have to go up against Mr. Beast. They're a decent video with a bad thumbnail and they're and they're recommended right next to Mr. Beast. And there's there's personal responsibility involved. I mean, yeah, someone said go into gym and work on your thumbnail. Yeah, there's things you can do. I'm just saying, mathematically, you are competing against more people than ever before. And, and that's difficult. It's just difficult to do. About to put red arrows in my bumble picks. <laughs> You're holding a wallet. Red arrow to it. <laughs> Get your shirt up with the abs out. Red arrow. <laughs> Uh, one more thing on that, just because I was reading this, this, this uh, college enrollment again is going up for women. Women are women are just doing well in school. They're doing Drake's for women. They're doing really well in school. They're as as an average, women are seventy percent of high school valedictorians in the last year. They're just doing better in school, and 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 I guess men in general are being more susceptible to porn and video games because they're doing poorly. They're doing worse in high school, and they're they're dropping out more of college. Maybe it's harder to pay attention. Maybe whatever. I don't know. But they're they're not doing as well. And so that's a good thing. In general, women finally um, getting, first of all, getting more chance to succeed in, in educational environments and then um, succeeding more in post-college careers is awesome. And it's good to help close the wealth gap. But uh, there's a, an issue when, because of this, women are poised, a lot of women are starting to poise to out earn their partners, which is, should be fine. Women out earning their partners should be fine. But the problem is this stigma, and this is a leftover societal stigma, the number of Americans who say financial support is very important in a partner is very high for women. And like men don't seem to care as much if their partner earns money, but women do. And so it's it's difficult because now they're competing for fewer and fewer women and they're they're also competing for these jobs against women who are graduating and doing well in school. So it's it's tough. It's just tough. It's just like a tough, it's a tough, um, it's a system where many are set up to fail. And again, I am not, deeply an expert on this and and to be honest you know i just i just i the more i learn about it i feel like i wish someone would talk about it in not a weird way <laughs> so I, I i'm bringing it up now I, i've just been thinking about it lately it's been on my mind and i thought i would bring it up today and see if anyone you know i don't have any thoughts on it that's it i i, I really i have no like hard take on it uh but i just thought this data is interesting and i i i would hope that people that are like frustrated with the situation don't turn to an angry route because that's ineffective it's ineffective and and you're basically just being uh exploited by algorithms man to end up buying someone's book and go to someone's conference and be told how right you are and you're gonna end up hating women and it's it's just a bad way to go and so i'm just trying to tell you that it, that there's probably a different route you could take than going in to be a full-on incel house husband it is i mean house husband would be dope <laughs> If Point Crow ever fucking answers the email and keeps commissioning, Point Crow said he was gonna commission this expensive ass sword from Ari and then keeps dodging the fucking email. I want to live off Ari making swords for Point Crow and I just sit here and stream. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> but Point Crow keeps, he keeps saying he's gonna do it and he won't do it. I just, yeah, I, that's what I just feel. I just feel like, um, and this is true of all people, like if they have an issue or they feel unheard, if you kind of make fun of them and ignore them, it just sort of festers. And then someone more morally corrupt can go to that person later when they're like extra angry and exploit them basically. And so I just think, you know, we gotta find some of these serious concerns and, and and give them a chance to be heard or at least mention that they're not crazy so that people don't get exploited by uh, Ben Shapiro's of the world. There was a talk with an alt recruiter and he said they just try to keep people angry since it's so effective. Yeah, so much of that shit is just about keeping you angry. Just keeping you angry all the time, telling you about things that, that make you angry, making you feel like the, the rest of the world's out to get you when they're not. <laughs> Everyone's kind of just trying to do their own thing. <laughs> And they're basically following their personal incentives. And a lot of this is just driven by, you know, massive changes in society towards technology and, and um, again, more equality in the education system, which is which is all good. And the, and, the, and the job market. Anyway, I did my part today. Eat that, Hassan. I'm out here in the streets. I'm out here grinding.